Hey YouTube, it's Gothic King of 52, and today's guitar inside is on a video. It's also a video response to um a ghost video I saw on the internet, and it's um uploaded by King Boo Six Six. And three photos he had in there, I know for a fact were real. I've done the research. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But his description was funny. These pictures are not real. Ghosts may or may not exist, but I know for a fact that these pictures are not real. Some of them I'm not too sure of, but three of them I know for a fact are real. Why? Because three of those photos are in one of my humongous ghost books right there. Yeah, right there. Three. All right. The, he had the brown lay of Raymond Hall, and he called it fake. Wow. I left a friendly comment, you know, saying, you know, comments him. The times in the video where those po those pictures appeared, and um, he also had the balcony ghost. You know, I'll show you what I mean in a minute here. I'm gonna look through it real quick. Um, just kind of skim here. Um, hmm. uh, yeah, three photos he said that were fake were actually in this ghost book. And what doesn't make sense to me is he's calling them fake without doing the research. He says he knows what he's talking about. He's wrong, obviously, because to me, why would he, they be fake if they were in an actual ghost book by a, a ghost hunter? Doesn't make sense, does it? It's like calling Cradle of Filth an emo band. It's just stupidity and assuming you know when you don't know at all. And that shit really pisses me off. And I just have to say, it really annoys the shit out of me. People just go off and... And these... I've had some of my ghost books featured in my um, YouTube... One of my YouTube videos. And digging through my closet, I found I had a shitload of ghost books I haven't even touched or read yet. I got those back out, so... Interesting shit. Very interesting. Good, good reading material. Oh, this one. This is, book is so freaking thick. It's hard to find the, the photos. But the three photos I commented on. There's one with the monk. There's one with the Bromley and Raymond Hall, and there's one of a ghost in a balcony in a church type building. So if I can find them, I'll show them to you. Ah, first one. Brown Lady of Raymond Hall. I don't know if you've seen this, but there it is. That's the Brown Lady of Raymond Hall. That's the one photo I commented on, what I was referring to. And the second one, or the second or third one I commented on, these aren't in order. I don't know if I can make them in order or not. But, but um, uh, some of these are, you know, ah. Another photo I comment on the, the second out of the three I comment on is this one right here, the monk one I was telling you guys about right there. And the third one I commented on. If you look on the balcony, I don't know if you can see that. But we turn the page and you get a close up of the ghost. Right? there now it's an understandable thing to not be aware of the afterlife and we also don't know what the fuck happens to us i mean to me it's a question of doubt cause sometimes because then when you get into whole the whole ghosts and spirits it often comes across religious views and shit and people get into that so heavily it's just bollocks and anyway one of the ghost books I found is by the Ghost Hunters dudes, the bald guy and the one with the goatee, yeah, Jason and and Grant. And this basically sums up what I'm thinking right now. It's so true. If you set out to prove a haunting, anything will seem like a haunting. Or actually, this is you know, that's basically what I'm getting at here is a um if you set out to prove a haunting, anything will seem like evidence. If you set out to disprove it, you will end up with the, only those things you cannot explain away. That's true. And that's a quote from Jason Hans and Grant Wilson, co-founders of TAPS. And you know what? That's fine if you don't believe in ghosts, but just to assume it's all fake and bullshit is nonsense. And the problem with that is, 
is that too many people these days can go into Photoshop or some movie maker program and fake a ghost and then post on YouTube claiming it to be real and people find out it's fake and the credibility for a ghost and poltergeist and the fact that they're real or not is just goes down to the crappy side of non-belief. But I've had too many paranormal experiences in my life and I've done so much fucking research on the subject that I am a 100 and bazillion percent, I believe in them 100%. But I know for a fact that not everything you see or hear is a ghost. So that's, that's what that, um, on my book, that's what that saying was saying. But the problem is, when you're a little kid, you know. Turn that down. When you're a little kid, you know, little kids have overactive imaginations. And they're not trained in the eye to look know what a ghost is and what isn't, you know. So their parents will just encourage that. So when they're, you know, their parents are trying to have sex or be alone, it's two in the morning and their kids wake up screaming, Mommy, there's a monster in my closet. And so, you know, the usual bullshit, they're like, son or daughter, ghosts do not exist and they cannot hurt you, blah, blah, blah. That, in fact, is a lie. Ghosts do exist and they can't hurt you if they're pissed off enough and get enough energy. But they're standing behind it, like I said, is they want alone time and their kids crying because they see a monster in their closet. It's either overactive imagination or it's a real ghost. That's happened before. But to me, that's, you know, I think I'd be more approachable with it, not just assume they're all fake, and, you know. Because what's it going to do is when your kid grows up and has an actual ghost experience, he or she is going to flip out. They're going to, it's like the foundation of their thinking is going to be like, wait a minute, there's a ghost right there, and he's throwing, and there's shit floating in the air and being thrown across the room. And he's got to think back to his childhood, and, and his mom and dad are going to pop up in his head, and, and they're going to say, ghosts do not exist. The problem with that is that it challenges the thinking of their mind, which is all right, I guess. But my opinion is it's probably going to scare the shit out of them twice as bad. So. I've lived in two haunted houses in my life. I had plenty of paranormal experiences watching the ghost shows and should load ghost books to boot. So I've done my research. And I saw the video too, uploaded by this guy, or whoever the hell he or she is, I posted a friendly comment. Basically saying, you know, keep an open mind, you know, not everything you see here is a ghost, not all the photo photos and shit are fake, so. But, you know, people, as technology evolves and gets better and better, we're able to catch more and more evidence, like, for example, taps. Oh my god, a couple of the shows I watch on TV, the evidence is so unbelievably amazing, it just blows my mind. One ghost show has this infrared camera, and it's Ghost Adventures. They uh, were in a house, and um, all the lights are off. But they had this camera that illuminated the electrons in the air, or something like that, and they caught a ghost coming in and out of the room. It was really cool. So, what we can't see with the naked eye doesn't mean it's not real. I mean, their equipment's picking it up. So... <laughs> Okay, if you want to get more into the subject, I recommend shows, Taps, the Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters International, they're all right. But Ghost Adventures on Travel Channel, oh my god, dude, these guys are really good. Extreme Paranormal, they're really good. And Most Haunted, yeah, you know, if you're looking for a cheap thrill and, you know, crazy scares, then watch it. Because um, after watching and reviewing all the other ghost shows I've seen on TV, most haunted is like a joke. I mean, the only thing they change so far what I've seen is, their, is the way they set their theme song up, the way they zoom into the buildings, Yvette Fielding's hair, and the way they transition between scenes. And once or twice, I was watching the show, they did catch a ghost, but it was hardly ever because those are those cheap ghost shows that when they, you know, they hear a tapping noise on, on the fucking wall and just assume it's a ghost and go haywire and the civil beep because they can't cuss on TV, it's beeped out. So. Which is kind of an inconvenience because when they hear more tapping while they're cussing, it's just a stream of beep, 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 beep. So, um, there's my two cents. And while cleaning out my closet, I found a box full of books I haven't unpacked yet because I've been doing moving around a lot. And I found a shitload of ghost books I haven't read. So, I have a lot to read. And they're really fun ghost books, you know, they really enlighten your mind, they give you food for thought. Like my thickest one by Hans Holzer, the big black one. It doesn't just go, here's a ghost, blah 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 blah, this really gets into depth, like, this one book I have really talks about 
life after the death theories and stuff like that. And it's really powerful food for your thought. It really makes you think. And that makes a good ghost book to me, I guess. So, um, and to his video too, like, you know, why would they be fake if they're in a ghost book? I mean, some of them are fake, you know, I don't know for sure. But three of them are in a ghost book by a ghost researcher who has done the research and has himself in his book. So, you know, it doesn't make sense to call something fake when it's been proven it's not. That's like calling Cradle of Filth an emo band. They've been proven countless of times they're not, okay? My Chemical Romance, that's an emo band, okay? Cradle of Filth is a British gothic black metal band. There's a humongous difference, but that subject is so exhausted because I know I'm right and people just are immature assholes who think they know shit. But. You know some emo bands that tend to whine when they sing like and they try to scream and sing while they do it and it sounds like shit and it's cheap guitar. That's emo metal. Cradle of Filth does not whine when they metal, full-blown metal singing, you know, and heavy guitar, and that's difference, humongous difference, but that's an exhausted subject. I've done three videos on it already in response to Revenge of Godzilla, and it's just a headache, and I'll get, I'll probably do another video of that later, but in the meantime, I mean, it shouldn't matter if they're emo or not, as long as you know the difference between emo metal and, and regular metal. Apart from that, you know, I, I don't think it should be limited to goths and emos listening to emo and goth metal. It should be whoever enjoys the fucking sound. So, get your facts right, then shut the fuck up and enjoy the music. It's, you know, seriously. It's... I've gotten better at sweeping. So, <laughs> get it real quick. I'm going to go on three strings. I don't want to go crazy in my videos. I end up looking out and getting the strings accurate, but I don't know. Once you master that, you can do it on any string, basically, like... Um... You know, in my videos, I'll go crazy on the strings. That's not really me sweeping, it's just me going crazy on the strings and hoping I do it right or make it sound cool, you know? But, um, sweeping is very hard. Well, once you get over that bump, that quintessential bump of learning how to do it, it's really easy, I guess. The trick to it is to have a pick sweep the strings up and down, and have your finger do a scale on the strings in sync with the strings itself, so it's... Sweet. Like that, and they have the scale, and have that do it in sync. That way, the notes don't ring off each other, but they go ding 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 like that instead of ding 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 ding, you know, like that. Not. So if they ring off each other, it's not doing it correctly. If you. Versus like single string picking, which is strumming on one string up and down really fast and then fingering each note individually and making it sound really cool. Or double hand tapping. You know? I've been playing guitar for a while, so I pick up on shit and figure it out, so I'm getting there. And I ordered some guitar strings offline off Musician's Friend. That's where I got my awesome BC Rich and the picks and the guitar strap. Because I'm wanting low on strings anyway, so. Hmm. When they get here, I'll probably do a review on them. Because I ordered Doctor Strings and I bought them before and they're really good. They work excellent on my guitar. So. This is, um, Dr. Do It. Guitar inside. Whoa. 